All right, so welcome to our PLB Landed Home Tour Series. Today, we are right here in D16, Meragi Road. If you're hunting for an extremely unique plot of land, how big is this land, uh, Jimmy? Well, this corner terraces sits on actually a plot of about 5,566 square feet. Wow, that's, that's humongous. If we were to look at the standard sizing in terms of inter-terraces, that's at about 1615 if you're talking about a brand new inter-terrace categorization. Corner terrace, minimally, you just need to have 8 meters in terms of width. This land plot has 25. 5.6 meters in terms of width. How about the depth? On this side, the depth goes up to 48.7 meters, close to 50 meters. And then, of course, on the other side, there's 36 or 37 meters, right? Meters, right? So, all in, we have 5566 five, square feet. In fact, it's larger than some of the detached home okay. status because yeah. detached home is only at about 400 square meters. That brings us to about 4,003 plus square feet. you notice that the shape of this plot is a triangular plot. So how do you utilize it and maximize it to your advantage? What we think is that, of course, if let's say you're intending to move in structurally, you can then keep it as regular as possible. And then you leave your front garden and your side garden to be a little bit on the irregular side. That gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do to the space outside here. I think we need to go into a segment of how we can actually transform this home with $500,000. We we're just discussing as we we're doing the walkthrough. There's a lot of things that we can do because we can technically extend two bedrooms on level one. You can put in a platform lift right towards the corner of the stairway landing. You can also insert in a huge mega pool right at this corner. This car porch right now. You can okay. alter the car porch shelter, right. right? We remove these uh, wooden structure beams. Right. What you can then possibly do is to do like a cantilever kind of style mm. of a shelter, maybe like a glass concept from the building structure all the way outwards here. And thereby you get a very open and wide car porch area. I think you can easily park four cars. This is actually in a three and a half story mixed landed zone. So there's a combination of inter terraces, semi Ds, there's detached homes right here, there's also corner terraces like this. But take note, corner terraces are extremely rare. If you're in a dilemma between taking a corner versus a semi, technically actually if we look at them, it's just a status and a name difference. But if you look at the exact build and layout, they all share the same categorization. You need to have at least eight meters in terms of frontage width, two meters set back at the side and the back. So technically speaking, you're buying the same kind of land and what is most important actually strategy number one right now this is asking at 6.3 million dollars negotiable brings our PSF 1100 mark which is extremely low a couple years ago people are thinking will landed properties cross the two thousand dollars mark and today it seems like that is going to be the norm mm. moving forward because those are already averaging about 2002 PSF in district 15 here in district 16 right now the landed properties are averaging PSF wise about 1500 odd to 1600 odd PSF so there's a good disparity of about 500 dollars in between the two districts. If let's say demand for District 15 continues to go up, there's always a limited supply of landed properties, right? 73,000 landed properties in the entire Singapore. We think there may be a little bit of a spillover effect onto the District 16 area. Over here, if you look at this trifactor triangle, it fits all the bill. In terms of land plot size, you're getting a huge plot. I think meantime, Jimmy, the audience will probably want to have a look at the interior first. Let's just say in. When the owners bought this place in about year 2000, 20 over years ago, the concept that they had for the home was to make it into a European, English, a little bit of Victorian style, as I would say. So later on, as you walk through the home, you will find that the entire home is in theme. Everything is orchestrated. Orientation is fantastic, east-west. West is actually at the back. Take note that this is a single loading home. This is towards uh, south facing. So at the front of the house, you will then enter into a mini receiving area, I will call it. Mm. It acts as a bit of a feature wall, but it acts as a privacy screen for your living area as well. You have full height shoe cabinets towards the right side behind the doors. It opens up into this, I would say an informal sitting area if I call it. And this place, I think they've dressed it up very nicely because all along the perimeter of this area, they've put in UPVC aluminium windows. Okay. That's what our builder told us. Right. So those are top grade windows. And in fact, he termed it as the Rolls Royce grade. Wow. Yeah, okay. so these are all weatherproof, of course, soundproof, in fact. Those are thick profiles. 
But in terms of the usage, it's very user friendly, very lightweight as well. Doesn't require somebody very big to, to you know drag the windows open. So fully foldable, it stacks up all the way to the corner as well. Right now they fitted in a very nice lounge chair. But if you want to turn this into a six-seater, four-seater kind of informal sitting area for you to host your guests or family, I think that's doable as well. Flooring-wise, this is done up by limestone material. Those are actually belong to a category of marble as well. You have a little bit of marks on the flooring, but these are what we call they have aged very gracefully. So this is the beauty of this kind of a material. Over the years, you will see them wear and tear marks over, but those are the beauty of this type of flooring. If you look at the landscaping and gardening, these are all maintained fantastically. The lawn are filled with natural grass, some pebble stones, tiles right at the side. So you can decide whether you want to maintain this site pavilion. If I may just add on, sorry, for the perimeter of the home, what they've done up is that they have used Chengai wood, the entire length of this 48.7 meters. If you look closely, those are double layered as well. Wow. So in terms of costing, they will go up double as well. I think in terms of the Rolls Royce great windows, right, it's firstly soundproof, but if you were to look at this exact locale, we're actually not facing towards the main road. We're along Upper Changi Road, but we're internally about three rows of houses inward. Yes. So that's fantastic because you're not too deep in. Five to eight minutes walk to the MRT station, which is very rare for landed properties. You're connected to East West Line, which is the green line that will bring you to Paya Labour area where your business node is. You can also go on to Expo area, which is just one stop away from here, two stops to Changi Airport. At Changi Airport area, we also see a lot of transformation that's happening. Right now, of course, we have Jewel, we have Terminal uh, 2, 3, as well as 4. Uh, if you go on to the website and you read Terminal 5, it's going to be a huge mega transformation not just for transportation or not just for passenger kind of uh, commuting back and forth but also for air freight those are uh, logistic department yeah, so yeah. this is really for the east levels because okay. right across there's also SUTD if you want like great local food you can just walk behind the entire Sime estate is right behind you let's move on to the living and the dining zones There's like a split dining and living concept. In the late 1900s as well as the early 2000s, split living dining is very common. This is like a segregation architecture to give you a sense that, you know, when you dine, you really focus on dining, hosting with your family and friends. When you are in the living room, you can just enjoy a conversation or watch a movie. Maybe some of you with young children, you might be wondering, hey, how can I child-proof this portion? You can actually raise up a glass panel, put in an aluminum tracking right at the top. You can flood it all the way from that corner and you can just leave one corner right here for entry up and down. So that will then provide the level of safety that you want to have. Of course, if you intend to make this area a bit universal friendly, yes. right, then what you can possibly do is of course put in a gentle slope. Sloping wise, of course, that will then have to follow a certain degree of gradient. Of course, you can check in with your contractors for that, but I think that is definitely doable. Then that will make this area very universal. If let's say you have a wheelchair family members, then those can be accessible as well. This area right here, very luxurious, I would say. If you look at the entire fitting of the place, even down to the chandelier, those are purposefully picked out to fit the theme of the whole. Can I ask you a question? Why yeah. is the glass so pristine? <laughs> it looks so... <laughs> it looks yeah, usually, shiny. Usually when we come to see glasses, right, you will try to look at the corners and see whether... What are the any, mirrors like? You know, like uh, so solid. It's like uh, so it's, clear. It's, it's basically all down to the owner's passionate care of the place, I would say. So the last renovation was done in 2010. But since 2010 till now, over 13 years already, the condition is still superb. So you can see that these full height mirrors are all stainless. That will translate throughout the rest of the home as well. You see how they take care of the place. This home, just as it is for strategy one, is really to just move in, own it. I don't think you even need a new coat of paint. Because don't just... need. Because this has just been freshly painted a couple years ago. But when we came in and looked at the place, it looks like they just painted it last week. Come, let's have a look at this place. In this dry kitchen area, they've really not saved on the costing. They went quite all out in this area. This material and the countertop over here, they're using solid surface. Along the solid surface, they have purposefully carved out this indentation. Really minute details, but this shows the amount of attention to detail that was put in during the construction of the place. Also on the bottom here, they have done it in a recessed style so that people who are sitting here still have some areas for the legs to go in, right? It's a mosaic house. Exactly, yes. So back then, I think about 13 years ago, mosaic house wasn't too in trend. Right now, it seems like it's coming back again, correct? Yeah, so they've also put in mosaic over here. The most important feature would then be the drawers. These are all again done in the shaker style cabinetries. And just look at the amount of uh, architrave layers that you have over here. Wow. These cost a lot to build. Nowadays, I don't think you can find a carpenter. They don't practice this very commonly anymore. So these are all 
workmanship and costing as well. Yeah. Another thing to note also, in the kitchen, you realize all the windows throughout the house, even that door over there which leads you to the back, those are done in the same UPVC aluminum windows as well. So they didn't just do it for the front of the house, where most people see it, they keep it very consistent throughout the entire place of the home. Even down to the bathrooms as well later on, okay, check it out. Okay, let's have a look at the wet kitchen. This is of course the place for you to really go heavy on your cooking. Whip up a storm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping out as if it's your own backyard. Yeah, this is really rare because for landed properties, 9 out of 10 landed homes that you visit, yeah. you will definitely not have a back gate. Your back recess area, uh, in terms of the 2 meter setback, will be facing towards the backyard or the kitchen of your neighbour. So this is extremely rare. If you want to find a landed pot with a single load fashion, you cannot find it easily. So the fact that this is a corner terrace is even more rare. So your kids can just come out, they can come back home, they can cycle. For kids as well, you can oh, yeah. just bring them out yeah. here. And they can meet their neighbours also. Exactly. Right. Great Place. Okay, awesome. Come, let's head in. This is like a additional shed for storage. Yeah. You can put your bicycles and stuff like that. If let's say you need like a granny room on level one, there is a granny room that's already provided. Let's have a look. Come yeah. to me. Sure. Let's check it out. What they've very cleverly done was to put in a bedroom towards the back. So if you have any elderly or people who prefer living on the first story, then this will be perfect. In terms of size-wise, this is great. You can see that right now, this has been done up in a study room fashion. So they've done tabletop space that's built in all throughout the perimeter of the room. If you move that away, you then have a space to go up to even a queen bed, a study desk, and even a built-in wardrobe. I think that is definitely doable. You also have very nice windows towards the back over here and windows towards the side as well. So that gives a lot of natural light into this bedroom, although it's tucked towards the back, but you'll find that this room is actually very well lit. So very conveniently then located off your granny room area is of course your common bathroom for level 1. Condition wise, it's really pristine condition. Even when you look up to the ceiling, there are no stains of molding etc. Toilet bowl in that area and then you have a separate standing shower area which is demarcated by the shower screen. Floating vanity design over here with a sink. This is where the utility room is. This can also double up as a helper's room if you need it to be. And one more detail I'd like to point out is that this door is two panel style. On the top, you have a fixed architrave panel and then on the bottom, you have a louvered kind of panel. That gives a lot of attention to the door. And if you look at this uh, lock set, right, this is what they call the mortise lock set. Mortise lock set is whereby the lever as well as the lock set are separate. So of course, those cost a little bit more to build. One last detail to point out is that all the doors, you'll find that the framing, those are done in very intricate architrave design as well. This one, if you look at it, a lot of MRT tracks. This costs a lot to build as well. So. Hey Jimmy, we need to talk about strategy too. So you have children at home, that is uh, how they are going to enjoy the swing chair. So you don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, especially if you have two daughters, they can enjoy it. Thanks, Josephine and River. Okay, we need to talk about strategy too because this is the exact location that you can pump up and do a, &A for two bedrooms on level one. So strategy two is to invest about 500,000. Bring us through the costing, Jimmy. Right now, you definitely have the flexibility to do that because in terms of setback-wise, you have enough setback to go more than two meters over here even if you were to push it out. So if you push it out here, you spend about 500,000 in terms of doing structural A&A &A in that sense. Add in another two full-fledged bedrooms over here. Put in a nice pool over there. Change up your carport shelter to the cantilevered style. Those will become a little bit more modern as well. That will bring your total up to be about $6.8 million. In terms of PSF-wise, those will still come in below the 1,500 PSF mark, which is the average for D16. Strategy three is actually to tear down the entire home, rebuild it based on calculations. 5566 five, square feet. We'll take like three and a half story. Yes. We just take a very safe uh, calculation of 60% of yes. the land plot usage right. for build-up area. That will bring our total GFA to be about 11,000. But do you really need 11,000 square feet home? Home, because that can probably go up to about 10 bedrooms like right. a super mega corner terrace but if you don't need that I think about 8,000 is, is a good 8, 000, size right? Yeah, I think 8,000 square feet will be a good size if let's say you want to fit in 6 bedrooms mm. 5 bathrooms you have a good general size living dining area family room etc yeah. 8,000 square feet will be sufficient if we let's say we price in about $375 per square foot pricing for rebuilding you take that multiply to 8,000 square feet in terms of build up size that will come out to how much? 3 million yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. rebuild costing now this is between three to four hundred dollars per square foot. Usually, people pick at four hundred to four fifty if they want really luxurious material. Lump it back into the purchase price. That will probably bring you to about nine point three million dollars mark. So, if you look at 
disparity between types of home. Mm. When you first look at inter terraces, the brand new Cat 4 homes, if it's 6 to 7, 1,006 to 2,000 square feet, this is in the next category as a corner terrace. You'll buy a huge plot, 6.3. That gives you like an advantage if you're hunting for a bigger plot versus maybe an inter terrace plot because you're owning more than two times the size of that land. Then if you go to the next category, which is semi D, some semi Ds here, 2,000 plus, 3,000 plus square feet, 7 to probably 8 over million. Right. We check a little bit about the mega like semi Ds. Right now, you can find a brand new semi D, 5,200 square feet in the D16 area at about $9.5 million. Right. In terms of land size, this would then be a close to 400 square feet bigger. And if you talk about waiting for the land price to appreciate, then that of course will give you uh, greater appreciation sometime down the road mm. uh, compared to these brand new semi Ds. How about the other semi Ds in terms of their asking quantum and land plot size? Of course, you have your category 1 homes. Those are the older ones for rebuilding. About 3,000 odd square feet. Those are already asking at 5.5 million. The second category is slightly older within the 20 over to 30 over years range. Suitable for A&A. &A. Yeah. Same kind of a land size, about 3,000 odd square feet. Asking between the 5 to 6 million dollars mark. And then if we look at the third category, those will then be homes that are less than 15 years old. Those are already asking at the 7 million dollar mark. The the new build those are already going at slightly above the nine million dollars mark this home technically belongs to two and a half to three because it's like fully renovated technically don't have to do anything should you choose not to if you are somebody that really loves like this kind of view from the side of your home because you don't want to have an inter terrace with two walls on the left and right hand side this really gives you that kind of like spaciousness that you want to enjoy so then just focus on column terraces and semi d i think it will be very clear because in terms of advantage of land size this has a huge mega advantage advantage and it's not easy to find a land plot with above a 5,500 square feet Correct. land plot. Yeah. Correct and I think we are also in an area which has a lot of uh, live work and play elements as well. Mm -hmm. Schools within a kilometers of course you have Changka Primary School, East Spring Primary School as well. If you're talking about your amenities the closest one would then be your Changi City Point area otherwise you can just head backwards towards Simei where you have East Point Mall or just another two MRT stops down will take you to Tampines Central area. In terms of working of course you have all your business nodes here Changi Business Park there, Tampines Logistic Hub at Loyang area as well. For playing, I think this would be great for golf lovers because we are in a very close proximity to three golf courses, Laguna National, your NSRCC, as well as your Tanah Merah Country Club. Let's move up to level two. One thing to note is the detailing on this staircase. Most of the time, staircases on the wall, you will find that they are plain wall, very nicely painted as well. But for this home, what they have done is decided to put in shaker style elements into the wall. So you can see that these are all very intricately done as well. All throughout the stairway, another pointer to note is that your wooden railings, right? These are what we call the wooden balusters. The wooden balusters back then in the day, I would say is very loosely controlled in terms of the height minimum requirement. The architect or rather the builder has very good foresight because these have already been built up to one meter in terms of height and that is the minimum requirement in yeah. today's context. Yeah, in today's VCA um, guidelines. Yeah, so very nicely done wooden frames here with your glass infills. Okay, we need to have a look at the best room first, the master. Come, let's go. This is like a hotel. Yeah, this is a uh, reminiscent of my hotel days. This is like a junior suite. Yeah, last night I used to do housekeeping like that. <laughs> then you must fluff the pillow, pop, pop, pop. I think this is done better than some hotels even look. Solid, solid. So there's three segments, your resting zone. This is like a mini living area. Then you have your dressing area. Then the fourth will be your walking wardrobe as well as your ensuite. Flooring here on level two, you'll find that all the bedrooms are done in solid parquet flooring. Most of the time you'll find that Parquet flooring, they are done in long wooden strips but here they have done correct to save time. This one will then cost a lot more workmanship to do and they are laid out in this format called the biscuit format. Usually master rooms in landed, they get the best view. So this is towards the front facing. Very nice European style windows again over here. In these sleeping quarters, you will find tons of natural light actually because you have four panels over here and then another two more panels right behind Melvin over there. So in terms of privacy, great distance to the neighbours in front. Great distance to your neighbours on the side as well because you have a large garden that is giving you that buffer area. I think if let's say you are home with small, young born, uh, young born lah. Newborn as well, newborn. Yeah, you can put in your baby cot here. Yes, so. this will be a perfect place for you to put in your baby cot. If let's say you have triplets, wow, you have space to put three. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. So in the bathrooms, what they have used on the walls and even the floor as well, these are all done in what we call the query tiles. Query tiles, the elements of it is, for the lack of a better word, yeah. it's like mopping mopping style, you know? Yeah, so that when the light shines on it, right, you get to see the very beautiful texture on it. Mm. Can you share with us why your face is so My face is not a query tile. This one is a... <laughs> so maintain one, go maintain. Go maintain, correct. Yeah. <laughs> This is really hotel-like. You have a long bath over here. Of course, if you don't want a long bath, you can then 
choose to put in a standing shower area. I think it is sufficient space. If you want to go up to a his and her sink over here, mm. that's doable as well. So you have your ventilation window right at the top, then the left right panel of walk-in, then a lot of um, storage right at the lower half of this uh, portion right here. Then of course, there's your dressing zone. So I think if you want to like have a little mini study in your master, that's also doable. Let's head to the bedroom across. So this can be your kid's bedroom. Again, we see a very consistent kind of uh, design theme right throughout the home. Flooring wise, those are solid parquet also. They even done backlight on the platform. Again, nice detailing by the A little bit of Japanese style. Correct. And then you come up here, like you said, a bit of Japanese style bed, right? In terms of the bay window area, those are very nicely cladded with wooden paneling. Yeah, along the bay window area as well. So very nice touch. I think it makes the space a lot softer as well. You know, not too harsh on the eyes. And in terms of windows, again, the beautiful European style windows that we see. In terms of quality, those are the same windows that we see downstairs as well. Right now, this is like a queen bed. I think if you can go up to a king bed, that's no problem as well. You have full panel or wardrobe over here. I think this area would be great if let's say you play the piano and you want to put the piano in your room, you have space to do it here as well. Not just piano, sometimes I see people play the what? Violin, the cello, yes, the big one, the twaki one. Yeah, those can be here as well, so great space. So this room has a lot of privacy in that sense. You're tucked towards the back of the property. Most of the time you'll find that windows are usually tucked on one side of the wall towards the back or towards the side. But here you do get a lot of light coming in. Same kind of a built-in desk which is done throughout the perimeter over here. You have top hung cabinets. If you look up, those are all done with very nice cornices. Very intricate design throughout the home. This would then be the same kind of platform bed format. Let's check out the common bath. So common bathroom very conveniently located off the common bedroom. Again, they've used the same quarry tiles over here. So this bathroom, I would say, is a very minimalist design, but what they've done with the texture has given it a lot of character, I would say. So here you have a floating vanity design, great countertop space, storage spaces on the sides and the bottom as well. And then in this corner, you have a very luxuriously sized standing shower area. So here, even in the bathroom, you can see that the windows are the same windows that they've done for the bifold doors and the windows throughout the home. So, great quality. Alright, so we're done with our PRB Leather Home Tour. We hope that you love this huge plot of land. I think if you're looking for a very rare mega plot that's close proximity to MRT, you're looking at 5,566 square feet of land size. And you want to find a moving condition home as well? Stay with your family, enjoy for the next couple of years. In the future, if you have plans to rebuild it, then you have the option to do that as well. Yeah. Or even just to add the bedrooms, which should talk about earlier. If you want to have a look at the place, give a call to George and Jinwei. They'll be very happy to arrange a private appointment for you. And of course, their numbers are right down here. Once again, thank you for joining us on this entire PLB Lander Home Tour series. My name is Melvin Lim. Jinwei. Prop to Lim Brothers. Always happy Always to show, show the place. place. Take care. Uh, what is the term of... I my shoe first, or <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In terms of the bay window area, those are very nicely cladded uh, with this one. You know, uh, of course, if you do need more monitors right now, this I see a lot of people have three, four monitors at home, not just one. Three. Yes, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. have, you definitely have space to do it over here. Okay. What are you talking about again? <laughs> yeah. Hey! <laughs>